It's the 3rd of July, 2021, and you're listening? Yes, it is. It is. We're nope. recording this on the 3rd of July. We you don't are. want to say it's we are, we are not. We're not faking. No, no, no. We are real, as real <laughs> as it gets. And you are listening to the future of photography. The, the future present. of photography. <laughs> I already, I already uh, uh, told everyone in the last episode that I'm that we're pre-recording. So yes, this is okay. it is. We're doing a bit of time travel here for you. This is the future of photography. It is Imar. It is Jeremiah and myself. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Ah, so, so today, a and Adrian is missing, but. Um, yes. Well, today we, <laughs> I mean, everyone has seen the title of this episode <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> we are going down the NFT, um, well, rabbit hole. Let's figure out how much of it We're going to scratch is, the surface. I want, to, I want to, to see how I can make like 10 millions of dollars with an NFT. And, uh, <laughs> Me Jeremiah, too. you <laughs> promised you would you would explain this to us, right? You would yes. Tell First us. of all, I'd like to say that that the market in NFT is stabilizing, and so there isn't it, it, that kind of hyper normal tulip craze. It's not in is. the it's not in the media anymore. I haven't seen it in a long time. So is it gone? Is it still there? No, it's become normalized. In other ah, words, the amount of churn in NFTs and the the uh, different kinds of NFTs um, are increasing daily and the amount of interest is increasing daily and the use of the blockchain uh, on which it, they are built uh, is busier than ever. But with the currency or the token ETH that works on that blockchain fundamentally called Ethereum, um, that uh, that amount has been decreasing lately as we speak and has dropped in value, which is a good thing for those who want to create, mint, and sell. And so we're not talking will... we're not talking a daily thirty nine million dollar NFT being sold, that kind of stuff. No, it, it, no. I mean, like the art market in general, it is becoming another venue uh, for photographers, um, or artists, but we'll talk, we'll stick to photography, um, to show their work and gather their community and hopefully sell, exchange, or resell other photographers' work. Uh, and in selling those works also benefit the original creator. So, um, these are all based on the, on the, uh, blockchain and I, we're not going to define that, uh, currently in this, but, but we've already is, tried uh, and miserably failed. We've tried. <laughs> um, but in terms of how a smart contract, which is the kind of fundamental um, value of the Ethereum blockchain on which many of these markets, but not all, are built, those allow the creators to create a understanding in the ledger of the blockchain uh, moving forward in their work. So they can ascribe ownership uh, or resale value to multiple people or single person or split the value or even attach the original work to the NFT, which is purchased. And I'll get into just a little bit of, of um, uh, Can I ask that. a question on sure. that note? Is there just uh, an NFT, is it an original or are there like editions of of that nft like is there yep. one of ten or yes. is it just is it you a good can, way you can do whatever you want make something original that's in that's the words, confusing thing you can do whatever you want i guess yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, in, in other okay. words you could you could sell your work and and we'll point out some some uh examples but you could sell your work as a one out of one original in other words mm -hmm. you're not going to mint uh which yeah. is the kind of a equivalent of uploading a guess and list mm -hmm. on any other marketplace or sell the you can only sell one, uh, one copy of, of one. this thing yeah yeah uh, but you can also okay. decide no i'm gonna have one out of a hundred or one out of three or one out of seven mm -hmm. and you could price mm -hmm. it accordingly mm -hmm. and um yeah. there are different ways to sell them on different markets you can have an uh, a list price under which you will not sell you can create an mm -hmm. auction uh, oh, yeah. A timed auction so that you say this print uh, will be available for 24 hours and no longer, 48 or a month. 
Uh, mm. You can create an auction wherein you have an addition of 10, and each multiple will double in, so in uh, price. Um, okay. Or you can have an auction where you start at a high price, and every, you know, with the clock, it decreases in price. So mm -hmm. you, you can control uh, how your work is, is sold, not only how it is seen. Um, each market has their own quirky audience or set of what they call whales, who are the collectors of same. Um, and uh, in order to do this, in other words, if you're a photographer looking to sell your work as an NFT, um, the first thing that I would uh, encourage anyone who wants to step into this is to understand your community. Um, the, it's the community, your fans, what you've built around it, either directly or indirectly, which will drive interest in your work. through the So if you don't have a community, then just putting then an NFT out is not really going to do anything for you. I don't th no, unless you're lucky and it hits and it's so extraordinary and stands out and somebody right. notices it and re you know reposts it. But in, in, in that respect, it is mm -hmm. a reflection of the actual art market, the traditional art market, because artists have their community uh, as in their fans, their yeah. buyers, yes. their yeah. um, interested parties. Okay. Yeah. But uh, un unlike traditional art uh, world where a lot of the hype Is, is focused on the value of that community. In other words, if you have a Hauser and Worth promoting your work or a Gagosian, it's certainly uh, more effective than having, you know, a small gallery in a little town promoting your work because their reach is international and they ascribe your value in the context of other artists that they represent. So, but, but you know, what's a, what's a canvas with paint that is made by Ren Rembrandt? What is that worth? the paint, the canvas, but it is mm -hmm. Rembrandt, the story, the history right. that creates the value of mm -hmm. that. So, mm -hmm. and I'm, I, I want to go back and just talk about something uh, that you pointed at, which is building a community. Well, you can build a community through social media, of Facebook, course, yeah. Instagram, uh, obviously mm -hmm. Twitter, which is a oddly the more robust of the visual Uh, social media, not Instagram. I mean, Instagram is following, but Twitter is where the collectors generally get their information. Um, and of course, there is Discord, where a lot of collectors and people discuss that and promote that. But going back to, I, th I forget who, uh, Seth Gordon, Seth Grodin, the, the laws of uh, 1,000 true fans. Um, There's a concept of 1,000 true fans, um, and your, Mark Andreessen has written about your, it. Your tribe, so to speak. Your tribe, yeah. the true fans, the people who really believe in you, who when you mm. put out something, they will connect with it. If you, if you put out a, uh, uh, an image, they will buy it. If you're a musician, they will buy it in advance. They'll buy your tickets. They'll go to hear you speak. Mm. They will buy a book. They'll order it in advance. These are your true fans. And if you have a thousand true fans who are willing to pay you $10 a month times a mm. thousand times a year. That's a decent income, yeah. That's a decent yeah. income for, for uh, an artist. And, and uh, so thinking of it in that way, how do you pull together a thousand true fans to begin your journey? So... If you just put a pin in that for a moment, and then we can discuss how to create right. a let's, work. Let's get our hands, uh, let's get our hands dirty. Mm -hmm. The first thing you need is uh, you need to have some Ethereum. There are marketplaces that you can use a Tezos coin, but I won't get into the so weeds Ethereum on that. Ethereum is a, a <laughs> cryptocurrency with uh, the, the smart contracts as a as something yes. that runs on that same blockchain. Yes. So how do you get Ethereum? You need to go to uh, a, an exchange uh, that is linked to a bank account or a credit card, and it depends on your territory. Even in the U.S., there are different exchanges that are allowed in some states and not in others. Um, 
But here in the U.S., the more kind of retail version is Coinbase. Uh, there's others called Gemini, owned by the Winklevoss twins. Uh, there's another one, Kraken, which is very popular in Europe and also here and very um, detailed. Um, and uh, and on and on and on. There's there's you know several, but not an infinite amount. So what you do is you link your bank account. It's like opening a bank account. You link it. It will be different in Ireland than it is in Germany and certainly here. Mm -hmm. Once that's there, I'll use Coinbase as an example because they're easy to use, though they do charge a little bit more. Uh, you put, let's say, a couple of hundred dollars or euros into Coinbase. Just transfer it in. Now it's in Coinbase you need to then purchase, based on your fiat currency, Ethereum. You can buy it. I mean, it's just like, you know, you buy and sell. It's just several buttons and it'll give you the equivalent. But where do you keep it? Now you need to get a wallet to keep your coins. You need mm -hmm. to keep your coins safe. And again, there's, you know, we could do hours on wallets. But yeah, this, is, this way, is just the bare we're, we're, surface we're scratching. Right, yeah. bare surface. Yeah. You go to a, a wallet like MetaMask. That's, that's a, a brand. Just Google it and you'll see. Uh, MetaMask is a web browser extension. So it works in tandem with your browser. Um, I, it doesn't really, fun, I mean, I don't use it with uh, Chrome and I do not use it with Safari. I use it with a browser called Brave. Brave is a browser that is a little more secure, it uses DuckDuckGo, which is a, yeah. <laughs> you could follow Pri Privacy that. focused, let's put it that yes, way. Yeah. Everything on, on, on Brave is, is privacy focused. And once you, you go to Brave and install the extension there, you can then transfer your Ethereum into your MetaMask wallet. And that wallet will follow you wherever and whatever marketplace you decide to visit and buy or sell work. More often than not, when you go to these login or sign up, they will ask you to attach your wallet. And by logging into your wallet, it becomes a secure transaction um, you're logged in through your wallet. You will have a unique public key, which is the key that says, send me money. Or <laughs> So that's how you get out. And you will have a private key, which you never d divulge, disclose, or keep on a computer. Um, once you have your wallet attached to your browser, then you can start to explore how you can sell. Now you can explore the marketplaces we are going to discuss without having a wallet, without uh, buying Ethereum, just to see where does your work best live or what is the best market for your work. Uh, each of these markets have a different strength and a different kind of uh, weaknesses. Um, there are markets that are only available by invitation. Um, in other words, there is a screening process uh, that artists have to go through so that they can make sure you're not a fly-by-night, you know, that you are a bona fide artist. Uh, in that way, they are semi-centralized, um, but they attempt uh, to kind of create at least the illusion that you're dealing with really bona fide artists. And they, those would be Nifty Gateway, Foundation, um, Super Rare. Those are kind of what we would consider, at least by surface, the, the Gagosian, Hauser and Wirths of, of the, quote, gallery slash marketplaces. And we're definitely going to link all those, of course. Yeah. In the so show. they're worth... Yeah. And these are all worth exploring to see not only um, the photography in it, but just, just, just scope let me of just work. show a few while you talk. No, mm -hmm. not crypto voxels. We're not. Uh, wouldn't be foundation. Here we go. Foundation. That's that's a a, a, a good one to begin, uh, and it's also the um, market that I happen to be on. One of the three. Uh, they've had incredible. Uh, success and um, 
So you can see that the prices have come to earth now, and you can see where the prices are listed. And um, you know, uh, there you go. We're, and, and you can just explore it ad nauseum. Really interesting. There is, like going to a museum or whatnot, there are, uh, there are works that are dazzling, works that are boring, and works that are mm. pressing the boundaries of technique. So uh, there's that. And they, they come in all shapes and sizes, but you can drill down. Now, what, see, connect your wallet. If you had a wallet, you'd click on MetaMask. That would make that would create a connection there, and you would be able to purchase. Or and then sell. I'd be out of yeah. one point one one ETH, which is uh, currently two thousand four hundred and seventy one <laughs> US dollars. Dollars. Yeah, and maybe three weeks ago it was double that. So there you go. It's a deal. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mega Strikes me like this might become very important for the future of. Um, oh, uh, I think it's it's incredibly important. Now, yeah. so you have to be invited to sell on Foundation, but if you go to Rarible, let's go to Rarible. Rarible is is in a way more like the eBay of uh, NFTs. In other words, you don't have to be um, invited. You can just put up your stuff there. Uh, and there is every manner of different techniques and photography and, and, and it's just really, uh, again, very, very, very um, all over the place. I mean, you can see, like, mm. <laughs> they sell these little mm. creatures and people <laughs> collect them and, you know, maybe one is one of one, maybe is one of, you know. Connect the anyway. wallets. And again, they're... Pro Connect your wallet. Connect your wallet. Yeah. Um, so Rarible is uh, a, a very, very uh, kind of open-ended place. So while it's easy to mint and uh, sell your work, uh, it may be more difficult to attract a community just because it's like a huge, huge jumble sale. So it's less curated. Um, there, there's another very a super rare is another very effete and like foundation very very similar, um, and nifty gateway the same. There are markets that connect real world work to NFT work. In other words, when you sell it, you're expected to deliver uh, a fun art print. Uh, note that it's usually to the very first purchaser. Because once it's in the, if your work happens to go up in value, it hits a resale market like OpenSea or uh, Try Showtime. And um, those things will resell your work. Obviously, the original owner will keep the original print. Uh, but 10% of the sale, generally, could be more, but generally, will go back to the creator. So every time it's resold, it will go back. And there's a very um, vibrant market in secondary sales because the young collectors are buying and selling and trading work based on um, not only if they like the work, but the kind of perceived value of the artist, that story. And, and so that kind of is an exciting market. Um, there is another approach, and that is crypto voxels. Uh, there's another one called I mean, there's, there's a few, but CryptoVoxels is interesting in that they are building a almost like the next generation of what we used to call Second Life, but it lives on the blockchain. They sell virtual land buildings and people are building and hiring architects or designing homes, etc. that live in this that people can visit with AR. Um, and... For example, one of the markets that I uh, mint on is called Portion. Portion is having, I think in a week, along with Sotheby's, uh, they're opening a museum and they've asked me for some pieces, which I am going to put up, to uh, be viewed in this virtual environment. Um, and people are having parties and get-togethers and... You know, uh, you have uh, musicians who are performing in here. Uh, there was a performance a few uh, weeks ago, I believe, that 12 million people attended. What? 
Wow. Yeah. A rap concert. Think of that. Think about that. So there is a new, and we are just in the prologue of all of this. This is just such early days of, of this that people are just finding their, their feet. Even the real so-called experts are still learning. And um, so I encourage the, the kind of uh, speculation. Um, there are markets uh, that are very inexpensive. Uh, one is called Hick et Nunk. Um, and Hick et Nunk, uh, which will be listed, uh, means here and now. So memorable, that name, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you speak it could Latin, have picked something a bit catchier. <laughs> Hickenunk is what I would call the the kind of uh, gallery, the storefront gallery that would be in the kind of uh, funkier part of town, the younger, coffee housey part of town. Those exist anymore. I don't know in New York. See, that looks call really it. attractive, now, doesn't it? The the Lower East Side. Yeah. There's it, it's much harder to search for stuff. It's more random, but the stuff is much. It it, it costs pennies to put your stuff up there and it doesn't cost a lot to purchase them. They don't use Ethereum. They use a coin called Tezos, which is gaining in popularity. So there's that. Um, overall, what I'm trying to say here is that exploring the different markets would be the first place you would look and go, where does my work fit? Mm. Uh, Portion uh, is a very interesting uh, market. They're, they're a, a younger market, but they really do segment photography and digital work. Um, and very handsome place, uh, not super expensive to mint. Um, and if you look at their photography section, um, you know, they're, they're, you might find some interesting work there that, I mean, more and more people are kind of minting there. I, I only use it for certain digital work there. Um, but uh, the I'll, I'll sort of jump into my pick of the week, which is a market called Ephemera. This is a market specifically for lens-based NFTs. Uh, and there is some absolutely gorgeous work. It's like going to a photo museum. Uh, again, that connect button will connect you to your wallet. Um, and uh, it's, it's a, uh, you know, it's a market that you need to be invited to. So you have to fill out an application, show some work. Some of them even ask you to make a video. Uh, and I'll just note that I applied to Ephemeria when they uh, began. And uh, I've not heard a word back. Um, they've sent me uh, email saying there, there's an enormous backlog. Um, but, you know, uh, if they manage to get in touch with me, I, I would definitely um, put some of my, what I would consider more purist photography on it. Now, and look at this. This is a photograph. It's selling for 8200 and. Eighty-one dollars. Yeah, um, and you'd be surprised what sells. Uh, there, there's photographers that have sold prints for three hundred thousand dollars here. Um, or Crazy. when I say pr yeah, prints because they bought the NFTs mm -hmm. and they also got an original. But even if you do not get an original, um, you know you own that particular work, and you can resell that work. Um, so the process would be exploration, building your social media, building your 1,000 true fans, getting a wallet, getting some, some, some ether, Ethereum, uh, which you need to pay for gas fees, which is the cost of using the network. <laughs> and those fees go up and down. We won't go there right now. It's complicated. Yes, it's not it's not simple when you think that only maybe one percent. You know, of people maybe in a couple of years, like all this stuff will become sort of like second nature. It seems like a yeah. really powerful tool for self publication. You know. Well, yeah, speaking yeah. of publications, there's a uh, NFT website developing called Mirror, uh, specifically for writers. 
So if you're a journalist, for example, and people like you, you mm. could sell a coin or a token uh, based on your work for the year. And you can say, you know, I'm going to Africa to do a, you know, tra- pan-African story or book or novel. Mm. And uh, people will pay you for it. Um, and then the community will own the copyright of that book. And yeah, as you yeah. sell it, it will be disseminated in the value mm. of the coin that you have sold. I mean, they're... The non-fungible token market, smart contracts, uh, art, commerce, and uh, creativity are absolutely coming together in an astonishing uh, mm. pace. For example, and I'll sort of close with this, but um, there was a gallery opened here in Venice, NFT gallery. In the gallery are four large screens. That's it. And the show mm-hmm. is, are all on those screens, and there's QR codes if you wanted to buy it, and that will take you to yeah, the marketplaces, yeah. etc. But the gallery itself uh, minted uh, a thousand. Uh, what they it's like um, a token, but it's a visual work of art based on characters mm-hmm. in Venice, and the, anyone who visits the gallery at a certain time gets one. And they're giving them to the people in the community and, and, and uh, coffee shops, restaurants, all manner of commerce, so that if two people have them, they will have benefits at those establishments. And okay. the gallery is trying to integrate commerce, art, and uh, a social cohesion at the same time. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's absolutely brilliant. So mm. it's an evolving universe but one that photographers ignore at their own peril because it is mm-hmm. a extremely interesting way of getting around having to go with your portfolio to a museum or high-end gallery mm-hmm. and beg for somebody to look at your work and open it up and determine if you are talented or sellable enough for them to present mm-hmm. your work. This is all on you. So there you go. Mm-hmm. <sighs> okay. So... Um, <laughs> And that was also mm-hmm. your 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 pick, right? Yes. Okay, so Ephemera. I will I'll skip my pick for today. Um, so we'll <laughs> we'll leave the last word to Imar. What's your pick? <laughs> my pick is just this uh, article I found about the craziest NFTs. Now I know you were saying that the market's after sort of sorting itself out again, but there's some very funny examples in this. Um, that's Nyan Cat, I think, which yes. my daughter. The byline is someone obsessed with for someone a paid but... over four hundred dollars for a fifty-two minute recording of farts. There you go. Yeah, that was the one that really got me. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting. Eighty-five bucks. So people will buy anything, won't they? Well, well it's <laughs> by the way, it's easy to buy. It may not be as yeah, easy like Jack Dorsey's first tweet as well. Yeah. Anyway, so would you say so that the value of anything is in the selling value, not the buying value? Right? Absolutely. Well, yeah. yeah. I think the value is in what uh, someone is willing to pay for it. Yeah. That is the value. The the yeah. the customer, the buyer, determines the value of things. The value, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's yep. there's material cost if you if you produce something, but mm-hmm. in this mm-hmm. case, that's bits farts and cheap. bites, and farts are cheap. <laughs> farts are. <laughs> Easy to come yeah, by. He made a good so. profit there, didn't he? Easy markup. <laughs> yeah, fifty-two minutes of farts. Why not? NFTs. If you, you buy go. a Tesla, if you buy a Tesla, you also have farts on board. So <laughs> we'll be cushion <laughs> mode. Anyway, we'll be back uh-huh. soon. Until then, everyone, take care and bye bye. Bye bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com.